Hi, Lower Elementary. Welcome to your Sunday Bible class. Um, thank you guys so much for staying in your Bibles and learning and growing. Let's go ahead and say a prayer and then we'll get started. Dear Father, I thank you so much for um, everything that you give us every day. Help us to be grateful for the ways that you help us and provide for us and love us. Help us to be more and more like Jesus every day, to share his love with others, um, to be kind and compassionate. We love you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. We are talking about Thomas tonight. Why don't you guys grab your Bibles and I'm going to introduce you to the Apostle Thomas. To play a little game with you. It's called I Doubt That or I Believe. So I'm going to read some statements to you, and you can either shout out, I doubt it, or I believe it. Okay, so the first one is I have a purple cat. What do you think? How about trains fly through the air? Hmm, maybe think about that a little bit. Is there something like a train that might fly through the air? <laughs> you can make a square watermelon. If you don't know, go ask your mom or your dad. See what they know. I once caught a fish 10 feet long. I did it. If you plant M&Ms, you will grow a tree. <laughs> that would be pretty awesome, though, wouldn't it? You can fry an egg on black pavement on a hot day. Maybe give it a try this summer. See if it happens or not. Cars can talk to you. Hmm. You can build a house to live in out of toothpicks and glue. Wouldn't that be a great STEM project? <laughs> Parents, here's your next STEM project for homeschooling. <laughs> you can brush your teeth with sand. Ooh. I don't know about that, but I would not try that. I own a unicorn. <laughs> I don't, but my daughter does. Jesus is alive. Absolutely, he is alive and our sins are forgiven. They are, our sins are forgiven. All right, so there is a point to that. And our point is um, our story about Thomas. Now, Thomas is known as a loyal disciple. A lot of times you might hear him referred to as doubting Thomas, but that's that's quite unfair to him. And I'm going to tell you why. But first, what do we know about Thomas? I'm sorry. Memory verse first. Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial. He will receive the crown of life. What does persevere mean? What does it mean to persevere under trials, do you think? All right, so Thomas. Thomas was one of the original 12 apostles. His nickname is Didymus, which is Greek for twin. And the interesting thing is the name Thomas is not actually a name either. <laughs> in, in, um, it also means twin. So basically, poor Thomas is named in the Bible, his name is just given as a twin. And it's very possible he was probably a twin, um, but we are not sure of whom, who his sibling was. So he is, his name is twin, twin. <laughs> his occupation is unclear. It's possible that he was a fisherman and he showed bravery and leadership in the gospel. After Jesus was re resurrected, he possibly took the good news to India to share the gospel. That is what tradition says. And he might have done that with 
Matthew or Philip. Um, it's, this seems like in the Gospels, he is more closely aligned with them. He was martyred for his faith. Um, he was killed by a spear, which is interesting because in our Bible story, the wound that he touches on Jesus' side was made by a spear. So his faith in the end, there's just, it's kind of an interesting correlation there. So ask your parents what that word means also. <laughs> All right, go ahead and turn to John chapter 20, verses 19 through 29. So this is the story that Thomas is probably most well known for. And this takes place after Jesus has was, died and um, was resurrected, but the disciples are not aware that he has risen from the dead yet. So on the evening of the first day of the week, the disciples were together. They had locked the doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Jesus came in and stood among them, and he said, May peace be with you. Then he showed them his hands and his side, and the disciples were very happy when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, may peace be with you. The Father has sent me. So now I am sending you. He then breathed on them and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. And if you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Well, Thomas was one of the 12 disciples. He was also called Didymus and he was not with the other disciples when Jesus came. We're not sure where he was. He might have been running an errand. So they told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, first, I must see the nail marks in his hands. I must put my finger where the nails were. I must put my hand into his side. Only then will I believe. Well, a week later, Jesus' disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus came in and stood among them. He said, may peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me, but still have believed. All right, so why were the doors locked where the disciples were staying? What was going on, do you remember? Why might they have locked the doors? And who came to see them? Who wasn't there when Jesus came? Did Thomas believe the disciples? And when people don't want to believe, there's a word for this, they're called scoffers. So do you think that Thomas wanted to believe that Jesus was alive or was he a scoffer? He didn't want to believe. What do you think? Do you think Jesus was angry with Thomas? No, I don't think so. I think he seemed very patient with him. So later though, what did Thomas say that showed he believed? My Lord and my God, that's right. Okay, so we have a story, another story for you about Thomas. And this takes place um, not long before Jesus was to go to Jerusalem and to go to the cross. And things were pretty heated um, in Jerusalem. The leaders were really out to get them and the apostles were aware of this. So one day, word came to Jesus from the sisters, Mary and Martha, in Bethany. Jesus, the one you love is sick. Please come so you can save his life. 
and they're talking about Lazarus, okay, the brother of Mary and Martha, and a good friend of Jesus. So Jesus gathered his disciples together. I need to go to Bethany. Lazarus is sick. The disciples immediately protested, no, Jesus, it is not safe for you to go to Bethany. That's right, said James. Remember the last time you were there? I remember, said Philip, the religious leaders tried to stone you. Jesus, you can't go back there. Yes, agreed Matthew, they'll try to kill us too. I need to go, said Jesus firmly. So if you look at our map here, who? Here's Bethany and here's Jerusalem. So you can see how close they are together. The danger is in Jerusalem and Bethany, where Jesus is saying he must go to, is in this area. Jesus is here, right, in this, at this time. And so the disciples don't want him to go back to this area because it's too close to Jerusalem. But Jesus says, I must go. Well, Thomas spoke up. What does it matter what the danger is? We shouldn't hinder Jesus from doing his great work. Let's all go, and if need be, we will die with him. That's very brave, isn't it? When the disciples reached Lazarus' home, they learned that Lazarus had already died. His body had been washed and placed in a linen cloth, and a linen square was wrapped around his head, and those preparing Lazarus for burial had placed aloes and myrrh between the folds of the linen. Oh, Jesus, cried Martha, if only you had been here. Lazarus would not have died. They led Jesus to the tomb where Lazarus was laid. Take away the stone, commanded Jesus. When the stone had been removed, Jesus said, Lazarus, arise. At Jesus' call, Lazarus rose and walked toward him. Thomas was amazed. He was glad he had come to Bethany. How he loved Jesus. He would be willing to be killed with Jesus. But he was thankful that he was able to see this great miracle of the Lord. So how did Thomas show his loyalty to Jesus? What great miracle did Thomas witness because of his loyalty? And how can you show your loyalty to Jesus? All right, kids, I have a couple of worksheets for you. These look fun. This is a word search about our story about Lazarus being raised from the dead. And then we have a crossword puzzle. Their other story about Thomas doubting that Jesus had resurrected. And that's what I've got for you. <laughs> All right. Um, whew, we're almost done with the apostles, and then we're going to move on to one more um, curriculum uh, lessons for the rest of May. Okay. You know what? I have to really look at that to see what it is. I'm excited to share it with you. So you guys take care. Be kind to your siblings. Be patient with your family. Get outside and play and have fun and enjoy the beautiful sunshine and just be grateful for the time that God gives you to be able to do those things. So I love you so much. Take care and miss you. We'll see you soon. Bye.